evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena. We're going to pick up with this warrior run. Made some bad mistakes, guys. I should have taken a... So learn from them. I will lose games so that you don't have to. This should have been a cruel taskmaster, this Iron Beak Owl. And um, the other big one I would say is this Brawl should have been... I forget what the hell the thing's called. It's the weird epic from the Grand Tournament. It's a 5-3 for 4 that damages adjacent minions when it hits a minion. So... Definitely, definitely screwed up. I actually don't know if that one only works when you attack, like if it's only while attacking it hits adjacent minions, or if um, it is attacked into. I believe it's only when it is attacking. So it's kind of weird. You drop it, it's only got three health, the opponent has ample time, and it's very easy to get rid of it before it can attack. But then again, if it doesn't get dealt with, it's a five attack minion, drops on turn four, and it has the extra potential to act as removal. Tugboat, oh, what an awesome name. Revenge, I think, is like 3 for 3, showing up in opening hands, now 4 for 4. Um, Weaponsmith, ah, do I keep it? I can coin it on turn, I'm going to keep it. This deck, I don't really trust its curve. The extra potential of getting another 2-drop is just not worth giving away this 3-drop. Okay, so as always, it makes no sense to coin the 2-drop here. Maybe if he were a Paladin, but he can just Wrath it to death, um... So, there's really no point in playing it. And he passed on turn two, so he's got a slow start, so that's great. It would have just been throwing away the coin for two damage if I had coined this thing out. Okay, well, all my four drops showed up, so we have a lot of options here. I could um, coin this for removal, or coin this for removal, or coin this just for board presence. It has the most health of all my four drops. Um, and the fact that its damage is low doesn't matter as much since I've got this guy to back it up. He didn't have anything on turn 1 or turn 2, so let's see what he's got on turn 3. Oh, is he really just going to claw shapeshift? Well, this is perfect, because he only... All he does is kills my 2-drop here, which gives me just free reign. So, what is the right 4-drop to play? Uh, I think King's Defender is probably not the right move. I don't think that's the right move. I think the right one is the Axe Flinger, not because of the burn, obviously, but because of the high health. So I can run this into something... And then finish it off with, hopefully, this weapon, but if not, then this one. Hopefully he doesn't play a 5 health minion, that would suck. I mean, Senjin or Yeti, not unlikely given how slow his start was. Pass 1, pass 2, just a claw shapeshift on turn 3. So he could have some good cards, there's lots of 3 fives in the game. Um, but yeah, if, if I have to... Whoa, jeez. Well, now we've seen everything, ladies and gentlemen. So, Astral Communion is... Not a good card in the arena, because you can't really build your deck around it unless you're fucking insane. And he did have a slow start, so it is possible, it's actually possible that this guy is grade A, capital K, crazy, and actually did get an early Astral Communion and take like the highest minions that he could. What did he throw out of his hand? He had an Iron Bark in there, he had like a, he had, he had like a couple of two drops, he had like a Panther I think. And he passed on turn 1 and turn 2 and pretty much did nothing on turn 3. So yes, this guy is capital A crazy. Capital A, capital K crazy. Um, here what I'm going to do though is I'm going to just play Sludge Belcher and hold this off for 2 turns. I think that's the most sensible thing. What are the odds he's going to top that can answer? Not that high. So um, I could have like whacked it or something and popped off its shield and whatnot. But really, why not just uh, use the Sludge Belcher for its intended purpose? And just keep on whacking him for 6 damage a turn. That'll kill him soon enough. Plus, I've got a lot of damage here. 7 in one turn. Then this is 6. Or 9 if I play it while the slime is out. See if he did get a... I mean, if he top decks perfect cards, of course, being a 10 mana, if someone top decks perfect cards, they're going to win. Okay, so I'm hoping that the ooze survives. And then nothing dumb happens. Okay, this guy didn't die. And my Ooze survived, so he can't shape drift away my Corcoran. In fact, this thing got hit twice, which is pretty unlucky for him. I could brawl here. That doesn't seem like it's that worth it, though. Okay. What do we do here? I think I want to actually play this while I've got it. The uh, taunt, that is. And I've got lots of uh, health to work with. So, wait, can I kill him? 4, 6, 7, um, 10, 13. I can't kill him. Ah, uh, you know what? Whatever. I could have cleared the board and been pretty safe, but um, why don't we just go for broke here? He's not gonna kill me, and I'm threatening lethal with a gore hell. He has to top deck a taunt, so I feel like it should be okay. Let's say he does top deck like a sludge belcher. Yeah, that's not great. It's definitely not great. 
I'd have to like brawl and you know, whatever. So astral astral communion is. I mean, the thing about astral communion that you always have to be afraid of if someone is playing it in the in the arena against you is that if they top deck the perfect cards, they will win because they have ten mana, so they're just gonna win. If he top decked a nourish, and then like a sludge belcher, and two other good cards. And then the following turn, he played like two more five drops, or a six drop and a four drop, or like an eight drop and a removal. He would have won. Um, so there's always a possibility. But uh, don't don't play Astral Commune in the arena, kids. Just really almost any other epic, like even a Hungry Crab, I would take over Astral Commune because at least a Hungry Crab is a one-two for one. In fact, in fact, given the popularity of Paladin and Murloc Knight in particular being a very strong card, I'd say that Hungry Crab is the best it's ever going to be. So, you know, keep, keep keep those crabs over those communions. That's all I'm saying. Wow, Stone Splitter Trug is a crappy card that I took pretty much just to have a two drop in my deck. It was taken purely for curve reasons, and man, has it worked out well. I've gotten it in like three of my games. I kept Cleave in case he has a really fast start that involves Flame Imps. I kept Bash because if I don't top deck anything to play, I'd rather have a three damage for three mana card to play on turn three and almost certainly kill something than, um,. Nothings. Okay, so I could do a couple things here. I could armor up and wait for a cleave next turn. That's what you do if you're dumb. This is definitely the right play. Obviously, you can buff this in trade, but it's much more likely that he'll just play another creature here, and then I can cleave both of them. Now, do I have to cleave? I don't have to actually cleave him here if I don't want to, but I think that's just the most sensible thing. It wins me the board. I don't go up a card because Novice Engineer replaced itself. See, so he's got seven cards to my five, and one of these is the coin. So, I don't have a card against him, but I cleared the board, and that, that's got value. Okay, so this Brute is interesting. Um, I could Cork on Elite and kill it, but I think a more logical play is to kill it like this, because it puts a weapon in hand, and it leaves me with a bigger board. Right now I have 5 damage for 0 mana. If I would used the Cork on to kill it, I would have had just 2 damage for 0 mana. So, uh, that's, that's, that's nice, because I might want to play the Sludge Belcher next turn, instead of having to play Cork on, or Removal. So the thing about Sludge Belcher, really the only thing that I'm concerned about is this is like the best time to play a vendor. No, never mind. Okay, so vendor is just four health for both of us at this point. Ouch! That stings. Would have liked that ooze or that weapon to kill the ooze. So I'm gonna take a greedy, greedy approach here with this Sludge Belcher. The ooze is just pathetic against it. He could, of course, have answers and buff the ooze or whatever the hell. But I feel like it's worth uh, taking a bit of a greedy approach this game. Because he's got the cards against me, having life tapped once. Power overwhelming. Okay, so that's... Unless he has some extra advantage off of it, like a like a panda or a void terror. This isn't a big deal, particularly, because it just dies now. So, I still have a slime, he doesn't. Warsong Commander. Makes more sense to play it next turn, then I'll have a charging refreshment vendor. Um, Do I use bash plus this thing to kill the yeti? No, that doesn't make sense. I could I could hit face and go brawl, which would have a two-thirds chance of killing the Yeti, but of course it kills my own thing as well. I'm going to trust my instincts. We'll just kill the Yeti like this. I'm not going to go for burn here. Although maybe I should. I don't know. I am behind on cards. He's got seven to five, and all I have is a three-three with nothing back, big to back it up. Yeah, I probably should have just gone for the burn, gone all in. Okay, so he's got a Grand Crusader with a random Paladin card. All right, well, I could, um, damn. I can play fair and go for Warsong, Vendor, hit this with the Vendor, and with my 3-3. Three, three. Oh, God, that's just like giving up. That is just like giving up. I could go for a Brawl. 50-50 odds of killing his creature. Super, super great. The problem is, this thing heals him, so it charges at his face and then doesn't do me any good. Oh, man. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a Warsong Commander as um, a, a taunt card to keep these alive. What are the odds with eight cards you can't handle a 3-3 three, three, and a 4-3 super small? But that's that's my only hope at this point. i got to deal six more damage to him in order to... Um, wow, that's interesting. In order to uh, try to get him down to seven so that a top deck to Hall wins me the game. Leper Gnome couldn't care less about it. So that's a pretty cool one. How did he... Oh, he got it as a as his random paladin card. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay, is this the time for a brawl? There's a 40% chance he's left with something really good. A 40% chance that all of his stuff dies, which is great. And then a 20% chance that this thing is all that's left. 
I think this is the time to play the Brawl. It's not great, but that is pretty much my one option. Okay, he lost his big cards. Kept his, uh, kept his Leper Gnome. It's not worth bashing because at this point I'd honestly rather bash his face. So he's down to 8. Top decked Gorhal almost kills him. This is unplayable, unfortunately, and I have to find some other damage. Alright, this is actually a pretty big board from him. He's got a 9 damage a turn, which is going to eat up through my armor pretty quickly. Hungry Dragon, huh? Gotta play it. It could just take up time of his killing it. Refreshment Vendor. I just, it's like giving up, I think, to play Refreshment Vendor. So we're going to just pass. So he's down to 8. I need one more damage somewhere. So I've already used both Corcrons. I have a Kraken. So I have to top deck a Kraken and then uh, Gorhal. Okay, so he... Alright, he's going to get a bunch of cards. Three cards. And he's got 14 damage on the table. Well, do I bash execute the 9-9? Nine nine? Is that what I do here? Obviously, any, any, any kind of chance of winning is a stretch at this point. Owl. All right, I think that makes the most sense is to silence this. The question is, do I bash execute it? Or do I bash execute this? I can't, I can't bash. My one hope here is that he ignores this owl, lets it hit him, or he, like, life taps for some reason, or plays a flame up, or just something a little bit careless, and then allows me to kill him with bash Gorhal. I mean, that's pretty much all I've got. That's all i got going for me. So I think I have... Do I have... Can I survive for two more turns? see, if I, um, top deck a Kraken, I crack in his face, he's gonna have, um, 9 to 13 damage. Yeah, I don't think he's attacked with his Cult Master yet. Yeah, he's actually gonna kill me. Shit. On a stick. I should have bashed his face last turn to get, to get the armor in. And then I might have, like, then if I had top decked the Kraken, then I could have crackened his face. And then I could have top decked Gorhal and win. Obviously, it's all a very, very big stretch. Did I horribly misplay this game? Honestly, I don't know. He just got a bit of a lead on cards thanks to his hero ability and thanks to having answers to what I played. And, um, that was it. Oh my god, please life tap. Please life tap, come on. You want that recruit. You want that recruit. Oh, he silenced his own thing. Ah, oh, fucking Annoyatron. Alright, well. Let's not make the same mistake twice. I don't think I have enough time. Like, even if I top deck what I need to win, um, I can't win unless he life taps. Or plays a Dread Infernal or something. Because he can kill this easily, and he deals enough damage to kill me next turn, unfortunately. Because this is 9 damage, and I'm down to 8 health. Yeah. Fuck. Well, this would have been this is this in this game was worse than a generic three five. Had I had it been a generic three five, I could I could have played it earlier, hit him in the face with it maybe. So um, here we're gonna take a take a little risk, and um, it's a long shot, but he might throw his five five and his four four at my kraken, missing that he has lethal. I don't really see that happening. He says thank you, which is bad manners, but. It's, uh, I made the right play, so fuck you, because, um, that was my only way of winning. If I had hit his thing, I wouldn't have been able to kill him. All right. So he says sorry. Oh, wow. You're so clever. You say thank you after you win, and then you say sorry before you do the killing blow. Wow, you're so creative. Are you like an honors third grade? That's so impressive. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, so we're at three and two, which is not very good. Uh, I might just end up losing this. So, those misdrafts, the Owl for the Taskmaster and the Brawl for the 5-3, both just hurt me. Granted, in that game, if the Brawl had kept one of my minions alive, it might have been able to deal the one damage it needed to. Then again, I never did draft the Gore, did draw the Gorehal, so... Yeah, Refreshment Venger was a total fail, and, um, didn't top deck what I needed. Amingo, the Hunter. Well, it's probably the one I have the best chance of beating. And we have a um, pretty shitty opening hand here. Alright. I'm just not going to keep either of these four drops. There's a lot of four drops in the deck, so I might as well just mulligan them away. I'm probably going to get other four drops, or it increases my odds of getting a two drop. Didn't happen, sadly, so 
I can coin this out on turn two, but then I have nothing on turn three. Although I guess I'm making a recruit then, so kinda, kinda worth it. The problem is if this dies, then turn three is just armoring up, which is dumb. In that case, I might as well just armor up on turn two and uh, play this on turn three and save my coin. Had nothing on turn one, which is good. This could have been a Frost Wolf Warlord. It's been weak in some games, but then again, the Frost Wolf Warlord wouldn't have been any better. Anytime this is weak, the Frost Wolf Warlord will be weak as well, because this is weak when you don't have a big lead on minions, which is what you need to be able to get value out of the Warlord. Hmm. Well, that definitely makes this not worth coining out. So, we'll do this. At that point, I'm probably just missing the region anyway. I'll just coin into the Weaponsmith and Axe the Fairy Dragon, hoping a 3-3 will kill his 3-drop. Haven't seen any Spider Tanks today. Saw one Ogre Brute, hoping none of that happens here. Alright, so we got a secret here. Battle Cry's trigger before secret, so even if it is a snipe, um, it'll be fine. And really, with the addition of Bear Trap, it's just very difficult to predict what Hunters will have nowadays. It's actually Snake Trap. Oh, it's Snipe. I just attacked so fast that the Snipe delayed activation. Okay, so he killed a 4-drop with a 2-mana spell, but I got to get a weapon. And now I might play Hungry Dragon, because this will kill not all, but most 1-drops that will spawn out of the Hungry Dragon. Slow turn for turn uh, 4 here. Just a Loot Hoarder and a pass. So I think this makes the most sense. Hopefully he doesn't get any injured fall deers or anything like that. Hungry Crab. Well, I might as well kill the Loot Hoarder. So it gives him his card now, but leaves him with less power on the table. Seems logical. Next turn for mana efficiency, I might play Regent to recruit. Ah, this is annoying because it kills my Hungry Dragon. And in fact, I can actually get Frozen Trapped here. Hmm... Do I check for Freezing Trap with their Elite? I think so. I think that makes sense. It lets me keep my 5-6. So it's not Snipe. Interesting. Okay, so it's not Freezing. Um, or Snipe. Or Snake. So like, most likely is Explosive, but you also have to keep in mind the possibility of the Bear Trap as well. Horse Rider. Pretty good for me to see this. Doesn't do that much for me. He's now actually trying to, ra he's trying to race me down at this point. So I think the most logical thing is just to play the Taunter. Keep my weakest health minion in the middle against Explosive Shot. Get a nice board presence going. Definitely happy, happy with this over the Frost Wolf Warlord in this game. Gorehow. Well, it might not be that great. I am getting a little low on health. Haven't gotten any of my healing things. He does have Explosive Shot, so good thing I played around it. And then he keeps going for face, which makes very good sense for him. Do I Gorehow this thing just so I can get the kill? Well, that makes it easy. He's not going to kill me this turn. Um, 13 damage off of 8 mana and 4 cards is a tall order. And I got basically 21 health. So I can I can gore howl all day long, baby. Okay, I think I'll use a gore howl here against the 4-4. Four, four. I'll let my 3-1 kill the 3-3. Three, three. Warsong Commander. Uh, yeah, I think that's actually probably good here. So we play the Warsong Commander and the Heal Bot. Heals me up to safety and kills that. <laughs> I gotta admit, that was pretty good. Sad that that's gonna get nerfed. And he's got three cards left. Realistically, very difficult for him to burn me out at this stage. Gotta worry about this because this will do, be two extra face damage. And I pro this is probably explosive. It could be Misdirection or Bear, but it's probably explosive. So at this point... Um, I'm eff effectively down 4 health if I play this. Master Jouster could be a problem. Always such a big joust on this. Not even for the top, but really just the Divine Shield is so huge. Okay. So I think we'll... Um, oh man, this is actually really good. So what I can do here is I can play the Regent. And armor up. And the Recruit gets Taunt. Which is just so solid. And so we execute this thing. I'm not going to gore howl it. That would be a little bit foolhardy. I should have probably triggered the explosive trap with the Warsong Commander first. I messed up. Well, what I'm going to do here is play the Panda. 
put the heal bot back in my hand so I can heal more. And uh, let's see if this is in fact explosive. Yeah, that was it was the explosive. Well, that's fine. I got a couple of one health minions, so here's where it's nice to not be up against a mage who can kill this or a paladin who can throw out things that will kill him. And I got the heal bot for some extra healing, so now I'm totally fine on health and ahead on cards. What he needs is one thing, which is big minions. Ah, oh, he gets a 9-9 nine, nine. on the nose. I had it. Shit. Well, that's exactly what, <laughs> what he needed, and I just used my execute. Shit on a stick. That's really bad. Oh my god, I could actually lose this. Well, let's play this, I guess. Let's play this. I have 3, 6, 7 damage. Not enough to kill this 9-9. Nine, nine. Oh, man. Alright. Can I kill him? 3, 6, 7, 9, 14. No, I can't kill him. So what I'm going to do is kind of go slow against the 9-9. Nine, nine. Oh, man. And just pass the turn here. Shoot. That was so good. I was exactly at 15. Force tank mags? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god. That's so bad. So now this thing can pop the shield off the force tank, but it also kills my own stuff, and neither of these have charge. Okay. Well, this is a good thing to see. It basically deals 3 damage to that, making it a 6-6, six, six, which is much more manageable. Can I actually kill him? 5 plus 4 is 9... 14, he's down to 7. That's just not enough. Uh, I hate this. Okay, the way it has to work is I have to do that, that, and then War Song, your time has come. That, then we'll do that. Play the Smith, armor up. I'm actually going to lose this game because he top decked a Crusher into Force Tank Max. Kraken is my main hope here. I got two of them because after he pops the shield killing my smith I can Kraken plus the heal bot to kill off this force tank That's just the only way that I can do it at this point. Oh My god, it actually happened Um, But am I dead anyways? I'm dead anyways because so I pop the shield Kraken plus uh, Smith kills that, and then this is exactly enough damage to kill me. If I play the Abomination, I still am dead. No, wait. If I play the Abomination, I can live. That has to be the way to do it, unfortunately. It's not a good thing that happens here, but I have to do it like this. Where I armor up. And let's just think this through real carefully. Uh, so the Force Tank Max will kill me if it's allowed to attack. So... This has to be dead, basically, so I have no choice. Wait, could I have killed him? 7 times 12? No, I couldn't have killed him. Wait, could I have killed him? Oh my god, oh my god, I missed lethal. I had 7 plus 5 is 12, plus 4 I had 60. No, no! I am bad at Hearthstone. Oh my god, I am bad at fucking Hearthstone. Shit. Guys, I'm so sorry, I missed lethal. I missed lethal and I lose the game now, because he pops this, this thing dies. This thing drops to 5 health, which doesn't die to the crack, and then it just kills me. Oh my god, but I had lethal. I had weapon plus smith plus the 3-1. That was 7 plus 5 is 12, plus 4 is 16 damage. Oh my god. Well, could have kept the Serena going, but instead I poop out at 3 wins, because I'm bad at Hearthstone, and I can't do 7 damage in one turn. Kraken doesn't kill this. I've already used Execute. Well played, and I lose. Shit on a fucking stick. That just sucks. Well, only got myself to be mad at. Damn. Really fought him to a standstill. He got some really good top decks, and then I had the kill anyways. But I missed it. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Please like and or subscribe. It was only my third run ever going below four in the Grand Tournament. And it was the first run ever going below four with the Grand Tournament with a class that isn't Priest. So this is not enough to put Warriors in the back shelf because I've really made some bad mistakes. I made some bad drafting choices and some play choices, and I'm pretty sure I could have made it to five wins at least if I had not made those errors. So I feel like Warrior, you know, even though it ended up being bad, I feel good about it, whereas Priest, when it was bad, it was like, well, I, the arena was as kind to me as it needed to be, and I played fine. So this mistake is back now. I don't know why. After you disenchant your cards... They show up as new in your collection, which is annoying. You have to, you know, go through and clear them out. Let's take a sneak peek at our next arena.
Okay, it's going to be Warlock or Druid. I hate Warlock. Do I need to play Warlock because I've played Druid more times? No, so we'll definitely do Druid. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care.